Hello everyone, this is Debbie at Color Color Everywhere. Today I wanted to um, do a little bit of painting. Um, I haven't done this in a while and I, I was thinking about it the other day and as I'm going through my pack boxes and opening them up I came across my flowers and leaves and uh, decided I'd do some painting on some real leaves today. So, um, thanks for being here and we'll get started. Here's my box. It just has a lot of paper flowers that I've made for embellishments. And But down in the bottom, there's um, some other stuff. I have bags of leaves that I have picked up and um, different parts of flowers and flower petals. Let me move some of these out of the way. And then I have some purchased bleached leaves, rose petals, which you can also paint on. Here are, um, let's see, these are also rose petals. They're just lighter colored ones. And some other pieces of plants that I've tried to press over time. Here's some big ones. Good. I think those might be peony peony petals. I'm not positive. Some of these have been in here for a while. There's some pretty little flowers that have been pressed. So anyway, that's what's down in here. So let me get these out. I'm just going to pick something to paint on. And um, normally I just, I draw something and just, well actually I just paint it on without even drawing it. But today I'm going to try using a stamp, a rubber stamp, and do it that way because it's a lot quicker, I think. will be a lot quicker. I don't think I want the really big leaves right now. So I'm going to put them over. And I think, I don't think I want the maple leaves. I think I'm going to use these. And I have they're all different kinds in here, but let's pull these out and see what what shows up from good candidates. And yes, they're they're delicate. Uh, they're not as delicate as you would think, but see right there, I just cracked that one by bending it. But um, they're nice and flat because they were in a press, so they they make a decent, you know, they have texture, but they make a decent. Um, smelling it to see, make sure it doesn't smell like mold and it doesn't. That's just part of the plant or something on there. Buzz on it. Oh, dust maybe. Um, they do make a decent place to paint. Uh, it's a very delicate type painting. Um, you use a tiny brush obviously. I guess these might all be the same kind of leaf. I'd like to get one with a stem on it, I think. That's shaped pretty. Oh, that one's kind of nice. Oh, here's some more. Oh, that one's pretty. I'll leave that one out. Now, obviously, when I picked these, they were not brown. They were all different different colors, golden and what have you in the fall. <coughs> Excuse me. And I picked them off the ground. That one's kind of pretty. Might leave him out. Here's a teeny tiny one. I'll leave him out just in case. I'm going to start out with a <clears throat> a rose stamp because I like roses. And then after that, I'm not sure what I'm going to go to. I have a wall full of stamps over here to choose from, plus two bins of clear stamps. Oh, he's cute. Save him out. There's a little teeny one, too. I'm not going to keep him up. That one's kind of pretty. Okay, I'm going to put these away. These are probably... Oh wow, at least 
three years old, at least. Every, everything I had just showed you in that uh, drawer. So you can save them for a long time. Get this drawer out of the way. Okay, now. So. Like I said, I've done these before. I don't normally um, gesso them or anything like that, but you could. I just try to put as little paint as possible on there to uh, keep them from breaking down or whatever it is they do, you know. And they stay for a long, long time. I mean, I, I still have people that um, I've given them to, they still have them framed and hanging on the wall and they've been there for a long time. I'm so bad about not keeping anything myself that I, I do, except for books. I do keep those sometimes, but most of what I create either gets sold or goes to somebody. So, you know, I think I'm going to start on this one. So, just so you can see it better. I'll be able to see the ink on the darker leaves, but you might not be able to. So I want you to see it from the start. So I get the, get the, here's what we're using for this one. And let's see, who's this by? Can't see it because there's a tag over it. So obviously it's an old stamp. All my stamps I've had for quite some time. I quit buying rubber stamps. Pretty much quit buying them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a long time ago because I started buying clear stamps and I had so many rubber stamps I had a wall just full of rubber stamps let's see Anita's which I've never heard of before so it's probably just a little this was only three dollars so you know it's a little cheaper brand I probably got it at the dollar store or someplace like that but it's, I like it it's a cute little stamp okay so get it pretty juicy so that it'll show up and it's not going to it's not going to stamp perfectly because obviously this is is not a smooth surface so make sure I'm doing it on the front yep so all you do is let's which way do I want to go go like this I'm not going to get it all on there but you just put it down and just really give it a good rock press so you get as much on there as you, you can. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black um, Fade Resistant Dye Ink. Okay, now like I said, you probably can't see that very well. I'll bring it up a little so maybe that can... Even up close, it's hard for you to see it that well on the camera. But it's there. Let me bring it closer. There. See? Good grief, it's hard to get that in the right place. So you can just barely see it. I just need to see it enough so that um, I can paint, you, you know, use it as a guideline. I'm not, I don't care if I can't see every single detail. I'm just wiping that off of my mat so I don't make a mess. I'm using small brushes. I just pulled a couple out. Um, and these purple brushes are new and they have sticky stuff on them from the packaging. And I'm going to wipe that off because it's driving me nuts. So I'm just going to um, take a little acetone on a baby wipe. And I have gel nails, so I have to watch with this and not get it on me too much. Or my nails will start coming apart. So, okay, that should take care of that. And yes, it's taken off some of the paint, but I don't really care. <laughs> I don't want it to be sticky. Alright. Okay, so I'm using small brushes. Um, just regular craft painting brushes. This is an Ar Arteza one spot it says here's a 
Cornell <clears throat> round brush number four um, Royal Langnickel um, 5-0 oh. same thing uh, three millimeter so you know I just picked a couple of smaller sizes and I'm gonna start with this little one right here somehow I'm not in the right spot okay here we go <coughs> excuse me for having a tickle in my throat I think maybe I should get a, a candy a hard candy that'll help it's early in the day takes my voice a while to get ready for the day get rid of all the sinus activity and all that gross stuff so okay here we go now I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing and I use a little reference I stamped it out on a piece of paper since it is hard to see sometimes it's hard to tell what you're doing so I just stamped a little reference out so I'll just I'll have this over here where I can see it to the side and just use that um, like I said as a reference okay while you do I've put some paint out here on the side I'm using Americana craft paint uh, right now I'm using Santa red and I have some um, burnt orange and I, I think I need to get some pink out too I think so let's see this is baby pink we'll see how that all goes so we're going to start with the red and basically I'm just um, laying down a base coat and it's no different from any other time you're painting with acrylics just on a different I mean you know as far as the technique goes it's just on a different um, substrate I guess you would say now this uh, memento ink has a tendency to um, uh, bleed or run with the paint so I'm not going you could yeah, let me see if I can make you see that back 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 here we go oh that makes me dizzy uh, you could you could kind of tell right here that it's starting to do that I don't mind it's it just sort of a, uh, keeps it from looking like there is a line drawn around it once it's finished and it it even helps with the shading so I don't mind it too much sometimes I'll use a heat gun to set it um, a little bit better but um, this new puppy I have she does not like the heat gun I don't know why but she just is terrified of it she could be in the other room in the basement other end of the basement from where my area is and my husband could be running a saw or a sander or something in there while I'm working in the other side I pull out the heat gun and start using it she comes running in here freaking out and wants to get up on my head <laughs> apparently that's her safe place is up on my head <laughs> so I decided I'll try not to use it when she's down here and right now she's taking her morning nap already in her basket down here in the floor so I'll let her rest for a while and that'll give me a little time to be on my be on my own behavior without her supervising me so So all I'm really doing is um, following the following the uh, little design. I'm, pa I'm painting this rose right now, this one right here, and I'm putting in the base coat, and it's really looking good already. That the black really is uh, blending the edges nicely. And if your brush gets too loaded with the black, you just wash it out and pick up some fresh paint. Let it dry a little bit if you need to but it, it dries pretty fast you see right here I can't it's hard to tell where the lines are so I look I just look at my little stamped image and uh, I actually could have looked at the back of the stamp but I like looking at the image on white better it's a little bit clearer move over here in the light a little better maybe 
see better. I have such nice lighting in my work area, my new work area. I've got so many LED lights up here. He, he just covered the ceiling with them practically. And they're really nice, but it still is hard to um, get good light on where I'm videoing, where I'm taping. So I have an extra light, uh, a floor, a floor uh, light that stands on the floor, and I've got it over here, but I don't know. Between the, the camera itself and uh, its <coughs> stand being in the way, I guess that's what does it. But it still doesn't always seem like it's enough light. I know everybody has a problem with light, so I'm just trying to fiddle with it now and then and live with it the rest of the time. Let's see, this comes out here. I thought that looked strange. <clears throat> okay. And you you can if you can I hope you can tell, there's little white spaces between And I'm not getting right up to the edge of the line sometimes. It'll be covered later. Now there's another little rose down here at the bottom. I really cannot see it on here. I think I'm not going to put it on there. Just leave it off instead of trying to guess at it. Because it, it doesn't really show up. It, it, it's not in the, in the picture very much. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, color on the stems. I'm using a um, Hauser Medium Green in Americana Paints. It doesn't take much paint at all. I'm going to go ahead and put out some light green too. Let's see, what is this? Citron Green. This is one of my favorite colors. I really like this green. I, like, I use it a lot when, when I'm coloring with colored pencil. And uh, I just like it. So here are the two greens I'll put out. <laughs> and there's a little bud. I'm putting the darkest colors on first. That's the way I like to usually like to paint. Kind of depends on what I'm doing, but basically that's probably what I do. And you can see why I'm using a tiny brush because and and I'm not I'm I'm barely touching the leaf. I'm just using such a light little touch and it's going on really nice. I mean, it's not, it's not hard to paint on here at all. Then I'll go back and put in uh, some highlights and whatever on there. And there's a little bud right here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I wrestle with this camera and it shouldn't be that difficult. For some reason I seem to have made it difficult. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just following the stamp basically. You can tell it's not a difficult thing to do. Especially if you use a stamp, you don't have to do any real drawing. So it goes real fast. It's not a it's not a big thing to paint. You don't use a lot of paint. really need some leaves. The leaves didn't make it onto the, as you can see here we go like this. The leaves did not make it 
on there but I think I'm going and here's the flower that I'm not painting so I think I'm just going to paint some leaves in up here a little bit probably need to put them on their own stem let's see I used to paint a lot of uh, leaves with fairies. I paint little fairies on there. And it started out because I just thought one day, oh, I, I think it'd be fun to paint on a leaf. And it was the right time of year. I painted on it before it was really dried up. I would brought them in. They'd been laying on the ground. But, you know, they're always a little damp. So I had a, um, a little fairy stamp. A little fairy that was dancing. It was just about, oh, about maybe about that tall. So I thought, well, I'll try that. Just, you know, to be trying. So I stamped it on there. And I had so much fun with it that I thought, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to paint some other ones on there. I didn't have any other stamps, so I just, I started just painting them for my, my imagination. I haven't done any of those in a long time. There's been there's a lot of things I used to do I haven't done in quite some time. Either because I've had other interests going on, like beading and jewelry. I do a lot of that. I haven't even done, I've not done any beading for almost two years. And that's to me, is amazing. Because I used to never, I didn't even go anywhere without taking a little box of beading that I was working on. So not to have done it in two years, I find pretty astounding. <laughs> But that's what happens sometimes. That was mainly due to moving and having things packed up for longer than they should have been, probably. But it's fun to go back to things that you like. So when I came across these leaves last night, I thought, oh man, I think I'm going to do that. I haven't in a while. I'm just putting some leaves in here and getting them based in. <clears throat> I got a new book the other day when I went to Joann's about using colored pencils on copper. So I'm getting excited to do that. I have some... Uh, polymer clay cabochons that I made that need to be uh, buffed and gotten ready to use in jewelry and I, I'd like to use those in conjunction with the um, copper coloring the copper and some other things and see what I come up with okay I think that's good for the design let me bring it up here again so you can see a little better So I've got it base coated. Clean my brush out a little bit. Now I kind of had in mind for my uh, roses to be a little um, pinky orangey red. If that makes any sense. It is in my head, but so I'm going to put some of this pink down. So now I've got these three I'm using together on the roses. So I'm going to start with the orange. See what? Now my red is looks not too bad. I got to put some more darks in there, but it doesn't look too bad uh, because from where the um, stamp ink faded into it. So I'm going to go on up here in the lighter areas with the orange and a tiny bit of pink. I'm putting so 
little paint on my brush. You can see that. Because that's really all it takes. It's such a small area that I'm painting. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm trying to do is um, lay the orange down into the red and then use the pink as the highlight and fading it into the orange a little bit. And then fading the red back up into it. That kind of blends it all together. I've been so um, uh, focused on beading for, it's been quite a few years, that there's a lot of new trends that have come out since then. Ways to use paint and what have you that um, I've never tried. So I'm having a lot of fun watching YouTube and catching up sort of on uh, different ways to do things from what, the way I used to do them. It is a lot of fun. And it's fun to see people different people, how they do things, and what they come up with, all the new ideas. And I love new techniques, so that's always fun for me to to see and watch, or see and do. I guess if you're seeing it, you're watching it, so. <laughs> now this is, <coughs> the shading's coming up a little bit here, looking nicer. Let's see, that should be light. What I normally do with these, I um, attach them. I just use uh, a little bit of glue. I'll, I usually put it along the, the veins on the back and just, <coughs> excuse me, lightly attach it to um, a piece of watercolor paper or if somebody wants a color, um, some paper that, you know, acid free, if I can find what they want, and, um, and then mat it so it looks like a really nice little painting. And it does look nice, especially if you do like mm, two or three, three, I usually do three in a row and just hang them like one above the other in small frames. It's real pretty. Um, I've painted, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I painted a train on one, just like a locomotive coming at you, so that it looked like it was coming this way. And that turned out pretty good, but it got messed up. It got wet, and I didn't realize it, and it ruined it. So I was pretty sad over that, but you know. Yeah, that happens. Got to be careful with stuff. And I usually am, but sometimes things get out of your control. Ah, let's see if you can see this. Well, hold on, I'm going to pull this over so you can see the paint. Look at the pink. See the pink right here? It's like shaped like a perfect little heart. That is so cute. a little bit. It's getting stiff. Get some pink on here. That's way too much. Sometimes you have to over exaggerate a little bit just to get the point across what's happening in your picture.
right now I'm just sort of dabbing and dabbing and stroking a little bit it's coming along let me raise it up raise it up for you See, it's starting to pick up the highlights a little bit. Let's see. So by the time I'm done with it, and I think I am going to get a little blackout, by the time I'm done with it, the whole flower will be covered. There won't be any uh, empty spots. I want to mix a little bit of mix a little bit of red and black here. Because I'm too lazy to get to go look for the other colors, <laughs> just mix it. Okay, that should be plenty. That should be good. And then I'm going to pick up some of the shadows in there, darker spots, so they'll show a little better. wanting to go in the pink for some reason instead of what I'm doing okay so bring this petal out a little bit better Doctor calling me with some test results. Uh, I'll talk to him later. Needs a little bit of shadow in there because it's not showing up separate. There. Well, that's a little bit more dramatic, for, but for it being that small, it kind of needs it. Well, let's work on the other side. a little bit more ins and outs. Now I'm mixing some orange and pink together with the red that was already on my brush. I'm going to try to use it to highlight a little bit. I haven't tried using watercolors, but I have a feeling it wouldn't work very well because it would be, well, it would either be, it would either look the same as the acrylics because you would have to make it pretty thick without being too watery, or it would, it might would disintegrate the leaf. So I don't think it would work very well. See, that's getting a little too pink. 
I just want the pink as a highlight, not as the color of the flower in this case. Just barely touching the water to make the paint flow a little bit better. just a matter of being patient and taking your time because it is small harder to see and you can't do um, real detailed because then you wouldn't be able to see what in the world was going on so you just have to you know go with the overall shape and form and Forget to get some of that orange in there. That's what I'm missing there. Oops. It's kind of a pumpkin-y orange. Not, it's not really bright. I really like it. Just laying down a line of color and blending it in. I have a tendency to do when I'm using acrylic and I'm painting decorative painting or whatever I'm doing. I have a tendency to mix mix the paint as I go instead of <coughs> excuse me <coughs> mixing it on the palette. Just the way I do it, I guess. Sometimes I'll mix it on the palette. Usually I just mix, if I have, have a lot of a certain color, I'll mix it on the palette. But <coughs> More times than not, I just mix it as I go. See if we can get a little bit of pink in here. Takes a little tiny touch. I just got these um, Crafter's Choice brushes. They're pretty nice for the price, anyway. I think. I'm thinking they were about ten dollars for uh I don't know, maybe fourteen, sixteen, eighteen brushes. I have plenty of brushes, but some of them are getting so old. I thought I'd treat myself to some new ones when I was at Joanne's the other day. I was so irritated when I went in there with, well, I say irritated. It was just a little annoying. I wasn't irritated, but I don't get irritated very often. But I was annoyed because uh, there were a lot of coupons. I used the store app for my coupons. And since we don't live where that store is now, it's a ways off. 
I um, I don't go in there as often. And when I say as often, it wasn't anything for me to go to Joanne's at least once a week for something, especially, you know, depending on what the project was. But anyway, I went in and I don't know, I guess I bought about $40 worth of stuff altogether for some projects I needed. And um, when I got up to the checkout, and opened up the app, it wanted me to put in my password. Well, forevermore, you know, I hadn't used that password and probably since I set the count up, so I had no clue what it was. And I'm standing in line, there's like three people behind me, and so I didn't get to use my coupons. Fortunately, I didn't have too much that I could have used a coupon for, or, or I would have been more irritated with myself or not knowing my password but um, used to when I'd go in that store there there was a shoe store right next door to them and I could never get my um, phone to open up Joanne's app because it would always revert to the the shoe stores um, server or whatever you call it you know it was and then I couldn't do anything so I'd have to turn off my Wi-Fi, turn it back on, well actually I think I turned it off and left it off while I was in the store, and then go on my phone to the app to open it then. It was irritating, but that wasn't the store's fault. We have some good gals at, our jo at that Joann's. They, uh, they know what they're doing, they're very helpful. Um, I hear them helping people all the time. And uh, they, like I said, they do know what they're talking about. Even the young girls, they know about a lot about sewing. You know, I always listen to see, are they telling them the right thing? <laughs> and they do. They tell, they give good information. So it's a good store. Okay, now let's see. We need to get some more of this orange in here because our color's getting away from us. making it too red. So now where we when, where we lived before we had to go oh maybe 30 minutes to get to um, Hobby Lobby and uh, then maybe another 10 minutes to get to uh, Michael's and we used to have a Dick Blix, and they closed, and so the closest one is good ways off, so we can't go there anymore. And uh, there's there's a couple of other craft type stores a little farther away, but I usually can find anything I need at Joann's or um, Hobby Lobby, and anything else I usually have to order. <coughs> which I don't mind doing. I just soon stay home and spend time on something I want to be doing. So I think I'm almost done with these flowers as much as I'm going to do on them. I need to do some on the leaves. taking the smallest little piece of paint on the end of my brush. Oh, why that leaf is so dark, or petal is so dark right there.
Now, let's see. Okay, let's try to finish these leaves and then I'm going to find another stamp. This will work pretty well. I'm using the stamp. Add a little bit more of a base to work on. There's a little crunch in my leaf right there. I have to paint around it. I'll put one more little leaf in here. There. Looks better. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little mixing. I need to let that dry for just a second before I do any more. While that's drying, I'm going to run over real quick and pick another stamp. Let's see, what do I want? Um, I'm going to pick something that's not a flower. picked up two. Here's the one I was talking about a while ago, the little fairy that I first started with. Still got her. She's pretty cute. She's by PSX. So she, I've had her for quite some time. And here's a little lantern that I think would be cute. It has a little bird on it. And it's by rubber stampede and it's an older stamp too so I don't know if either of those are still available no clue okay let's see work on these leaves a little bit Taking out some forest green. It's still probably not going to be dark enough, so I add a little black to it. Rose leaves are kind of dark. I don't want them to look like the wrong kind of leaf. So between the forest green and the Hauser medium green, I should come up with something. 
Okay, now I gotta get these part here done. Let that dry. I forgot there was a little bud in there. I'm adding a little bit more water to this paint to get it to flow a little better. This is a nice size brush. 5-0. It's working very well. I have a set of um, really small brushes. really really small brushes I like to do miniature work with but I don't use them too often this would be a time when they might would come in handy but this one's working pretty well That's looking a lot better <coughs> with the darker, excuse me, <coughs> the darker color. Now I'm, what I want to try is using my um, pens, my pit pins, black pit pins that I use for detail work. I want to try using those on here to add in some lines and different things to add to it. So I think I'm just going to, and it's going to have to be really dry to do that. I think I'm just going to put in this base color on these leaves and then let it dry really well before I go back and do that. Okay. So there we go. I don't know if you can see it better up close or like this. Nothing came through. So that's just using a very uh, undiluted acrylic paint craft paint and then I'll go back later and put in some detail lines and what have you see how that works so I'm going to lay this one aside and um, start another one and I think I'm going to I guess I could do the fairy She's pretty cute. Where does she fit on here? Yeah. This poor stamp has been used so much. It's just like... I'm thinking... Make sure that's clean. Alright, let's try this.
it's not a very clear stamp really to start with. It's very hard to get a real clear um, image with the stamp. There are some spots that aren't clear. But it's clear enough for me to see. Um, I hope it will be on this dark leaf. We'll try it. Not going to be out much if it doesn't work. Just a leaf that I picked up off the ground. So here we go. I'll let it sit there for a second. Maybe it'll help. Oh yeah, see, I can even see it. <laughs> Have to get a lighter, lighter colored leaf for that. <clears throat> I wonder what would happen if I tried it on a skeleton leaf. Uh, I might not stamp on there either very well. At least not this particular one. Well, it's worth a try, I guess. I have so many of these. That one's... I'll use that one. piece of white paper to put behind it. That might make it easier. Of course, it might mess up the camera, too. Let's try and see what happens. I have a feeling that it will work, but I'm not sure if it will work with this stamp because it's very, very detailed. And the skeleton leaf is, well, it's fairly smooth. Smoother than I thought it would be. It's got a little split. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to go right down the middle, I guess. Here goes. If I have enough on there to do the outline and everything, then it'll work. see it. I mean, I could see it, but I can't. It's not really enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to just take this leaf and I'm going to try this other stamp because it's not as detailed and see if it will work. Yeah, that one works. Okay, cool. Like I don't have a lot of these leaves to use. <laughs> Look at that package. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I think that's enough. I can tell what it is. It'll make me a cheat sheet just in case I need some reference. There we go. Okay, now let's see. I'm definitely getting out some teal color. Oh, this is sweet mint. Maybe I'll use that. That's pretty. Oh, it's also new. Maybe I already have one. Nope. <clears throat> okay, 
this time I'm using a three millimeter or eighth, one eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch brush is what it says. Still that Crafter's Choice brand. And let's see. I have no idea how this is going to do. I'm wondering if maybe I should. Hmm. <laughs> try something. I'm experimenting guys. Go with the flow. Um, where is my gesso? So I'm going to try putting some gesso on the back of it. White gesso. Just to give it a, a background. Nope, oh, wrong one. This is gesso that's been mixed with the color. Look gross, I know. Well, I probably could still use it. When I was doing some big murals, um, I needed, I had a big background, I wanted it to be the same color. I have these little spoons, I have a lot of this golden paint in these big jars, and I had these little spoons, which were little sample spoons, like for ice cream or whatever, that I got from a friend of mine who was going out of business. And most of my jars have a spoon inside the jar to use to scoop out the colors because this is um, the paint that I the, the uh, golden paint that I use is the heavy paint so it just scoops out you can't really pour it out it just scoops out so this this is gesso mixed with a little bit of heavy paint and um, I'm just going to um, go ahead and use this creamy color it shouldn't be a, it should work just fine all right, here we go. Now, I've got the outline. I'm on the back. There's the front. I'm on the back. And I'm just going to coat it with gesso any place it's going to be painted. I don't know if this is going to help, but what I'm hoping it will do is fill in some of the little, little um, cells of the leaf because it's gesso, and then also give it a background because you, it's kind of hard to see what's happening because the leaf is so um, delicate that might mess up my well, might work might mess up my stamping but I'm going to try it and see what happens I guess I better leave it in one spot but I can see on, on here that was under the leaf and when I painted through the leaf I can actually see the stamp lines that it carried with it so I don't know if this is going to work or not. Try it out. Probably won't do exactly what I wanted. And I might... Might would have been a better idea to do this first and then stamp. But we'll see. I'm kind of putting a heavyish coat on there trying to get it to fill in the... But trying to get it to fill in the... Um, leaf fill in all the whole you know little spaces but it's actually going through the little spaces just like it would if I was using cheesecloth or something like that uh, when I pick it up I'm probably going to be disappointed but that's the only way you figure things out I'm trying them I'm going to come down about here you have to try them I like this little stamp. It's very pretty. A little Chinese lantern. I used to do a lot of oriental themed little books and just different kinds of paper arts. So I have quite a few oriental stamps. I don't use them as much anymore. I never was a big card maker or scrapbooker, but I use all the same tools that they use, but just in a different way. So, 
I have a lot of stuff. Most of my scrapbooking I do digital digitally. And I haven't done any of that in a while either. It takes a lot of time. Where I used to work, I had a lot of free time during the day. I was there by myself. And my bosses really didn't care as long as my work got done, what I did. And uh, had that job for like over 20 years. Retired a few years ago. Let's see, I've got ink all over my fingers. That's from holding this down. Okay, so this is probably going to be a mess. Let's see what happens. Uh, actually, not as bad as I expected. I can still see most of the design. But it has blended with the, with the paint. I'll try something here. Now that there's one layer on there, maybe it will catch this. Not sure this is going to work, but... You know what they say, go big or go home, so... <laughs> Doesn't hurt to piddle and try things. Okay. Hmm. I think I'm just going to let it dry a little bit and then try it. I'm going to put this spoon back in here. And we don't waste golden products because they are they might as well be gold they're so expensive in 2004 my husband was in uh, charge of transportation for the 2004 National Veterans Wheelchair Games they meet once a year in a different city sometimes in a different country, but usually in the United States in a different city. And it's all, it's like the Olympics for um, wheelchair veterans. Now, it doesn't mean that they're in a wheelchair because of their service, which, but more often than not it is, but any veteran who, who uses a wheelchair can participate. And that year he was in charge of the transportation because he worked for the government in a position that led him to that. Well, they also use volunteers. This, this time it was in St. Louis. And um, they use volunteers to um, help out in all parts of the, the games. And they have rugby and um, basketball, swimming, archery, racing, uh, obstacle courses, just all kinds of stuff. And it if you ever get a chance to go see it, if it comes to your city, please do because you will be amazed at what these people can do. At the time I was putting off having surgery on my ankle, so I was hobbling everywhere I went. And um, you know, sometimes we complain a lot when we're in that kind of situation because it gets real frustrating. And I'll tell you what, my eyes were really open that week about, you know, I didn't really have anything to complain about. Those guys and women, they they were amazing. I uh, I was watching them play. I didn't get to watch too much because I was I was sort of acting as my husband's assistant, and I was over like 1,700 volunteers who throughout the day, throughout the whole week, that had to be directed and and. Uh, you know, fed and all that kind of stuff. So I was pretty busy doing that. But I did get to watch a rugby match. It was... <laughs> you think American football's tough. You should see these guys in these wheelchairs play rugby. They have... Um, their chairs are made a special way so that the, so that the, the wheels kind of go in. And um, they are so tough and rough. And as I was watching, one guy broke his finger. He didn't even realize it. 
his finger was, and I was right in front of him, sitting off the sideline. His his middle finger was bent back like this, and he he was going to go ahead and play, and they wouldn't let him. They made him they made him get out and um, you know bandage his hand and everything, but he was going to go ahead and play. I'm just astounded. It was pretty amazing, and they have all levels of um, still not quite dry. They have all levels of. Uh, participation. For instance, they have um, racing uh, with the people who are in uh, motorized chairs that uh, they have levels, different levels of uh, ability that um, they put people in. And it is, and to see them go over the obstacle courses, I couldn't even do what they were doing with two good legs. Or well, like one and a half good legs, I guess I should say. But I mean, you know, I was riding around in a golf cart back and forth in the center where we were. And um, that was wearing me out just using the pedal. And here they are doing all this stuff that I, I, I just was flabbergasted. Well, one of the displays they had there, um, someone at the Chrysler plant had done uh, a mural. And it was pretty... Um, Oh, military, the way I think of it. It showed a lot of war scenes and um, men in uniform and stuff like that. Which, yes, they all were. But I got to thinking about it, and I, I love to do murals. And I thought, well, I wonder, wonder if... And this mural was on loan from, from, the, from the guy who did it at Chrysler. So it wasn't really theirs. But I thought, you know, what if they had their own mural that just showed about the games, that showed... You know, pictures about the games and what have you. And um, that was their, the year that we participated with it. It was the 24th year. So they were coming up on their 25th year. And I thought, that would be cool if they could take their own mural with them and have it every time and put it up. And it was if it would just be about the wheelchair games. So I thought about it and um, ended up talking to one of the, uh, the, big, the, the big guys and ask them if they would be interested in me painting a mural for them. I said, you know, I'll provide my services if you want to pay for the supplies, because I knew it was going to be pretty expensive, and I'll provide my time and what talent I have, and um, then you'll have it that you could use however you want. So they thought that was a good idea. Of course, my husband was rolling his eyes the whole time, because all he could do is think about... Oh boy, here she goes again. <laughs> Get herself into something. It's going to take a while. I don't know why he worries so much, but he does. Anyway, um, so we, we worked it out, and I had planned to do like a 4x24 um, uh, foot mural in one piece, like a, like, on a, like a banner or whatever you want to call it, so they could display it like that. And... Um, but they said they, you know, they never know what their venue is going to look like from city to city. So they, they don't always have a place where they could put something that big. So I ended up doing um, six four by four canvases, uh, the big, uh, thick, two inch thick artist canvases. And um, they purchased all the supplies, the paint, you know, whatever I wanted. They said, just order it and we'll pay for it. So, um, I ordered the golden products and uh, did the murals. Took me quite—I think it took like 400 hours altogether, or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but um, yeah, they—it took a while, and I really, really enjoyed it. And um, they use them still to this day. Um, that, like I said, they started using them in 2005. They made special. Uh, since everything stays packed up all during the year, including the paintings, they made special frames and special cases, one, a case for each painting, so that it could go in storage and could travel around the country and not be damaged. And it, that, that's pretty exciting. That's probably one of the biggest things. My claim, That's probably my claim to fame of anything I've ever done. I had an article in the newspaper and, you know, things like that. And... Um, and it's it hangs they they hang every year during the wheelchair games. So if you ever should get the chance to go, and uh, you make it to one of the um, competitions, please take it 
take the chance. And if you um, see my paintings, that would be cool too to know about. What I did was, they didn't have a lot of memorabilia. So they, they kind of put out a call to some of the people who had worked there for a long time in the, in, with the VA for a long time and um, uh, asked them if they had anything that, you know, souvenirs or programs or pictures or medals or whatever. And uh, I ended up with a, oh, a box, probably about, not very big. It might have been like 10 by 12, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger than that of items that they sent me. So I had like a t-shirt with the um, words on it and stuff, you know, um, and some brochures, very few pictures. Most of the pictures were in the, in the catalog. I, there was a couple of catalogs in there with black and white pictures. Of the, my idea was to use actual pictures of the athletes that had participated in the mural in the paintings. So I took everything they sent me. I sat down with Photoshop uh, or Paint Shop. I can't remember which one I used. Probably Paint Shop. And um, created the the um, design there. So I would scan the pictures. Scan. I scanned everything. Metals, pictures, patches, um, keychains, whatever I had in there, which like I said wasn't a whole lot of different stuff, but I scanned it all. And then I um, used those scans in, uh, just like if I were doing a scrapbook page, I used the scans, resized them, some of them I had to do a little bit of uh, digital work on and what have you. And um, created my design lettering and all you know on each each one has the name of the city well like for five years the name of the cities then how many participants there were and then pictures from that time frame as much as I could determine of the participants so um, it worked out really well I was very proud of it, and I still am very proud of it. You can probably tell by the way I'm talking about it. But um, the, I think the coolest thing was the stories I heard, because I didn't go to the first, the first time, I've never seen them displayed. So I haven't even seen them in the frames, because I've never been to another city to see the games where they're displayed. But since, you know, he still worked at the VA after that, so we had friends there, and they would, and I participated in some other volunteer things and so sometimes the the gals who went they would tell me oh you should see it it looks so nice they got it hung up here and like this and and uh, the the thing that I liked the most was the stories they came back and told me about the people who were actually in the pictures that were on the, the paintings were people who were still participating in the games so you know they could look on there and see a picture of themselves on the mural that was pretty cool and um, so I really enjoy that. Probably if I could, if I was physically able to still do it, I would do a lot more murals and things like that. But I can't get up on those ladders and do all that anymore. So, you know, you do what you're able to do. But I will say that was probably one of the best projects I ever did. It took a long time. They came back back to me five years later and said it's five more years can you do another mural well I was reluctant <laughs> because I knew my husband was reluctant he gets nervous when I have a deadline but I said sure you know I asked him first he said sure go ahead reluctantly but um, at least he said sure and um, so I uh, I did another one for the 30th year and I guess that's the last one I'm going to do I actually have pictures of those on my uh, Pinterest. One of my boards is called Deb's Studio. And there's just some pictures of some past things I've done in there. 
I was going the wrong way. Okay, so this is kind of thick. You can see the back. Still not all the way dry. I'd hit it with the heat gun, but the puppy's still asleep, so I'm not going to do that. So I've just started painting on the front a little bit. can't really see the lines but I'm, I'm looking at the at the little picture a stamping of it so, um, it's kind of poofed up a little bit where it's wet with paint but I think it'll flatten back out so I'm gonna go ahead and keep on with it has sort of has little ribs in it so I'm kind of indicating those looks like a little hot air balloon almost Still using a pretty light touch, although there is a lot of. Since I tried to fill some of that delicate veining in, there's still a lot of um, paint on there. Get a different size brush, go back to this other little one, and. paint here for about 10 more minutes. Or so. One of the other things I did when I was doing murals, well, a couple of things. I um, did the did all the backdrops for a, a big Easter production, Easter play one year. Got the, um, I worked at a drywall and painting company, so I had some contacts with suppliers and uh, called a couple of our suppliers and asked them if they were interested in donating some supplies for the program. So they said, sure, just let us know what you want. So I cut big sheets of drywall, paint, brushes, rollers, everything that we needed from them. They were very generous and uh, we painted and painted and painted and painted until we finished all that. There was a town in the background. There was the upper room where they had the Lord's Supper and it just it was it was a big production. It ended up alright, but it sure wore me out. That's been several years ago. I mean like ten or fifteen or whatever. And the other thing I did was uh, a friend of mine had a, a stamp shop and they were renting the building and, and the back part of the building was a really pretty nice stamp shop. The front part was like a um, a craft, 
what they call it, a boutique, not boutique, that's not the word. You know, it had stalls where different people would sell their stuff in there on consignment. And um, we had a big flood, which we got flooding going on now. But we had a big flood that year, a big flood that year. And it covered the stamp store pretty much. And even was getting into the upper part, which was the, the stamp store was at like a different level at the back of the building. And it was even getting up into the front part where the stalls were. And I couldn't get in there and sandbag or anything like that. Or help them clean out the store because the flood was coming. So, you know, I told her, I said, well, when it's all over and you're going to paint and what have you, let me know and I can, I can come in and do some painting. Well, she called me one day, and she says, okay, she says, I don't know what you're going to say about this, but she said, I'm ready for you to come do some painting. And I said, okay, and which I thought was kind of strange, because I thought she, they had already gotten everything back in order without my help. <laughs> they had a lot of help from church and stuff. So she said, no, I want you to do something special. So she had this idea. They had a, The side of the building was, um, it's an old building, it was like, Concrete blocks is what I think it might have been. Some kind of concrete. And uh, she said, I want you to paint a, a, a town on the side of the building. So what we finally came up with is um, I, I was painting shops. So there's like, there was like a, um, a, a barber shop, a sweet shop, a gas station with the old-fashioned pump. A grocery store and I can't remember there was probably something else but it you know like five or six buildings going down uh, going down the side of the building so it looked like you know you could walk in the door life-size and um, I had gotten along pretty well of course I was working full-time then so I couldn't you know be there every single day to get it done but it was it was taking a while to do well, in the middle of all that, they closed. They decided um, there was another flood, and um, they had they decided to close the 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 store, both stores. So I wasn't finished. I was only you know like half done. So it stayed like that for a little while. Then one day I was driving down the street and saw it, and I thought, what in the world? Someone had bought it. And they painted the whole side. They'd re oh, paint it over it, of course. The whole side of the building was bright orange. <laughs> so I was glad I'd saved some pictures of it. But it would have been so cute if it, when it was finished. It was really starting to look cute. But, you know, things happen. It was a good experience, though. I'd be up on a uh, scaffold. One of those roll-around scaffolds that the painters and builders use. I borrowed one from someone and, that I knew. And I'd get out there on that scaffold. It was all I could do to climb up there on it. I had to get up on... I think I had to get up on the back of a pickup truck and then get up on it. I couldn't climb up there. I was already starting to have back and leg problems then. But it was a nice experience. It was fun. Then I've done a lot of decorative painting. We first moved into our last house, which was 20 years ago. I decided I had roosters in my kitchen. So I decided I wanted a rooster, a window painted on one wall. So it looked like with shutters, so it looked like you the, the window was open and you were looking out into the barnyard or the, you know, field or whatever. And um, a rooster was sitting on the windowsill. Well, I have to tell you, that rooster came out so good. I mean, he was just wonderful. The um, the shutters came out really nice. I put red shutters. They came out really, really nice. Everything about it looked real nice, except for the, the barnyard, the field. I could not get that the way, what I, I don't know. I just, it just didn't want to come out. The way I had in my mind. And sometimes, if it doesn't come out the way you have it in your mind, it's useless. 
So it was, I got to a point where everything was done except the barnyard, and I changed it two or three times, the barnyard part, where you look out the window. And finally I said, okay, I got to get away from this because it's not getting any better. So I just left it sit for a long time. And I, of course, every day I looked at it, you know. And um, finally, after three years of it not being finished, I said, that's it. This is getting painted out. So I painted over it. But that was the nicest rooster, I have to say. <laughs> you know, once in a while you do something that's just, you don't know how it could have been any better. And that was that rooster. He was so nice. But he had to go, so... Okay, I'm getting so much paint on here, it really needs to dry some. I'm starting to lose this color. I want more of it in there. So I've been fortunate to be able to try several different things. My, my husband gripes about all my stuff. And he's right, I have too much stuff and I'm trying to get rid of some of it, decide what I really don't need. Not, um, I usually don't buy anything unless I buy it on sale. And, um, I've decided that what I'm going to do now is not buy something unless it's for a project I'm going to be working on right now. Unless it's a tool. New tools I can I can still get if I need them, but I have so much stuff already that there's not very many tools I need. But I'm trying to uh, not buy things in advance just because they're on sale, thinking, yeah, I, I know I'll use it. I probably would use it, but I'm just not doing it because, I, in other words, I'm not stockpiling things. I don't know what they're for specifically. That's kind of hard to do once you're used to doing it, finding things on sale. But you got to stop somewhere. I didn't really have a lot growing up, and I guess I thought, you know, once I retire, I'm not going to be able to afford a bunch of stuff. But nothing seems to have changed, so... I've just changed my idea, my way, I'm changing my ways, changing my ways in my old age. I always tell everybody, don't tell anybody if you're going to retire, because they think you have so much time, and that your time is theirs. I don't mind doing things for people at all, but sometimes it's like... Oh, I gotta do this. <laughs> I actually like doing things for people. Why else do you have a talent for something? Whether it's a great talent or a small talent. The only reason you really have it is for other people's benefit, is my way of thinking. It doesn't do you any good. It might give you some pleasure in what you're doing, but it doesn't really... You know, but it might do somebody else some good. I love how people react when you give them something that they really are impressed with. They they like it so much, their eyes just light up. And that's what it's all about for me. I like to do that really a lot. I've been known to give jewelry away just because somebody really goes on about it and likes it. And it's fun. It's fun to do. It's always fun to surprise people, I think. Okay, I'm just putting in some indication of some leaves right now. And you probably can't tell very well. Let me get this in the right place. Uh, just some indications. Mostly because the paint's not dry enough to do anything else. I'm going to put the bird in a little bit. Find some blue, maybe. Little 
the blue. Uh oh, that didn't mix very well. I can't really see anything on the on what I'm painting, so I'm just going going to copy in the stamp. Get the little bird in here. So he'll be ready once it's dried. some yellow. decide to use the same colors I have on the stamp or similar little they're actually a little brighter okay now I'm gonna let this dry so I won't finish that right now and I'm gonna go back to the other one real quick and try out um, Is it here it is and try out some mark or some uh, pins on it uh, let's see. I don't know if I want to use brown or black maybe I'll try the brown sepia mm. try the small these are why oh, I have such a hard time figuring out where the camera is <clears throat> Faber Castell Pit Artist, Artist Pin Dark Sepia. And these are India ink. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try. Let's see now. Let's go down here to the leaf. through real easy so you have to be careful I got my leaf out of shape here a little bit so I'm gonna reshape that yeah I don't like the way that's working it's almost it's really, it's tearing the leaf up, so that's not going to work. Good idea, but not working. I'll just put these back. Let's see, I'm thinking about what else I have that would work. Oh, 
might be just as bad. Might not be as hard. These are Arteza fine liners, and this is a black. Maybe it'll roll on a little better. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Just want to flesh out the shape of that leaf a little bit. I think the other one's all right. Okay. Uh, I'm still just barely, barely marking. But since this is a little bit more of a Felty tip, I guess. It's not quite as hard. It's working. careful I don't think I'm going to do anything else to the roses I think they'll be fine the way they are. Kind of afraid to do much to them. Okay. Now I want to do one more thing or try one more thing. Um, I want to try to color the edges of the leaf. And. This is Arcane, Archival Ink, Rangers Archival, Archival Ink in Sepia. Now all I want to do is to lightly darken the edges, I think. Oops, I better watch it. Might not work. Might have to get out the walnut. Which, I just got a new bottle of walnut. Distress ink, which was not cheap. I've looked everywhere for some. I finally found it online. Went ahead and got it. And I think it was like, I don't know, maybe eight dollars. Ah, see, that's what I was afraid of. This is Ground Espresso. I 
dabbing it more than I'm rubbing it, I think. I'm trying to anyway. It's kind of bringing up a nice uh, texture on the leaf. Now what I'm wondering is, do I want to try to put this piece back on? to the tape. Probably be the strongest place on the whole whole leaf. Good as new. Alrighty then. Here we go. Well, I really like that, but. starting to get dark enough. Uh. I gotta put that piece back on. It kind of changes the shape and then I'm gonna leave it alone. Once this is 
glued to the backing, it's not going to show much at all. It'll just look natural. Okay, so this is just about the end here, and uh, lost my place. Here it is. And I'm thank you for hanging around. I know it's been kind of long and maybe boring, <laughs> but there we go. That one's finished. Turned out all right. So, I guess that's it. Bye for now. Come back again. <laughs>